Portugal is in the southwest corner of Europe. Its capital, Lisbon, is in the west of the country, close to the Atlantic. Just outside the city are the resorts of Estoril and Cascais. I recommend that you stay out here. There's a very good train service into Lisbon, and generally we found the hotels were better out here than their equivalent in town. You can fly directly to Lisbon from the States, and when you do, you'll land here at the small but recently modernized Portela Airport. You're just 20 minutes from downtown Lisbon. And as soon as you clear customs, there's a tourist information office and some place where you can change some money. That's what I'm going to do right now. Well, they say money makes the world go round, and here in Portugal, money is the escudo. Now, the paper money comes in denominations of 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and there's even a 10,000 escudo note. And the coins, what I've got here is 20, 50, 100, and 200 escudos. Let's spend some escudo. It's a very small airport. You can't get lost. And as soon as you come through money changing and tourist information, you'll see the sign straight ahead for taxis and buses into town. There's a very good budget way to get into town, and it's the airport bus. It leaves from here, right outside arrivals, leaves every half hour, and you pay on the bus. It'll take you right into the center of Lisbon, but if you're going on to Estoril or Cascais, it takes you right to the train station, and from there you can get a train every 10 or 15 minutes down the coast. And right next to the bus stop, you've got the taxi stand. Taxis in Portugal are very inexpensive. They're great for hopping around town. You can take one out to Estoril or Cascais, but that's about a 20-mile journey, so it'll cost you a bit. The airport bus leaves every 20 minutes, and the fare is 430 escudos. I'm going to stay out of town at the Hotel Village Cascais. This is an apart hotel, apartment hotel, which means you have your own kitchen, which means you can save a lot of money cooking for yourself. And you can save money on drinks, too. Buy your liquor at the store and keep it here in the fridge. They have excellent sports facilities here at the hotel, too. A health club and that round pool. I guess you don't do laps there, you do circles. At the Hotel Village Cascais, rooms with a view cost from 17,000 to 25,500 escudos. This is the beach at Estoril, and that's Cascais up along the coast there. Both get very crowded with Europeans in the summer. By the way, this is a terrific place to base yourself to explore this, this whole region of Portugal. You know, this is the middle of October, and the weather is perfect for sightseeing. Those little boats bobbing around in the harbor are so pretty. You know, Cascais is a fishing resort that hasn't become a tacky seaside town. And you can even swim in the sea here if you like. Now, pollution has been a problem in the past, but they've managed to clean it up. What you should look for is the Council of Europe blue flags on the beach. Then you know it's safe to swim. Who needs the sea? Give me a nice hotel pool anytime. You see, here, Esteril and Cascais is a big resort area. Lots of hotels, almost all of them have pools, and I think the hotels out here are better than the ones you'll find in Lisbon. If I were you, I'd base myself here rather than in town. The Hotel Citadella is a four-star near the center of Cascais. Rooms cost from 22,000 to 29,400 escudos. Portugal is a good place to buy handicrafts, especially pottery. This is Theamicarte Cascais. The owner is a potter from Mozambique, and he told me that's where he got the inspiration for a lot of his distinctive fish designs. Amicarte Cascais, 
Hot's caused from 700 escudos. From fish dish to fresh fish, I think I sense a theme here. If I want a you know, this is a new adventure for me, ordering fish by weight. What they do on the menu is they list the price by weight, then you get your piece of fish weighed up, and you have an idea of how much it'll cost. Then it's straight onto the grill. This really is fresh. Yeah, seafood is one of the real specialties of Portugal. After all, the Atlantic Ocean is so close I could hit it with a rock. Be sure and try some fish while you're here. This salmon is terrific. By the way, tipping in Portuguese restaurants, service charge is usually included. But here, and really everywhere in the world, if you get good service, be sure and leave a tip. About 10%. At the restaurant Costa do Estoril, weighed fresh fish costs from 1,250 escudos. For visiting Lisbon, the trains run from early morning for all the commuters. And if you want, you can stay in town for a meal in the evening, because they run into the early hours of the next morning. Thanks a lot. You'll find English spoken at most of the main train stations, but of course, you shouldn't count on that, so it's always a good idea to pack a phrase book. The station has regular service from here into Lisbon, and you can check the timetable. The train from Estoril to Lisbon costs 360 escudos round trip. The train runs right along the Atlantic. Think about it. That's America, right over there. The trip into town takes about 25 minutes. And listen. If you can squeeze it in, you should definitely visit Lisbon a few times during your visit here. The train brings you in to the Cais do Sodre station, which is on the waterfront close to the center of Lisbon. Also on the waterfront, but further out of town, is one of my favorite parts of the city, Belim. There's a tram to Belém that goes so, from the Cais do Sodre station, uh, and there's a ticket booth here where you're no. supposed to be able to get information and buy tickets. Okay, I managed to buy a one-day ticket that'll cover all my travel on the trams and the buses. I asked the fellow for a map, but he either didn't understand me or he doesn't have one. You see, I don't speak Portuguese, and I don't think he speaks English. Now I have to try and find my tram to Belém. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun. I soon found it. The tram stop was just across the street from the train station. If you're staying for a few days, you can get a three-day tourist pass. A three-day transportation ticket costs a thousand escudos. Stay with me, and I'll give you some tips on finding your way around Lisbon, and take you to a restaurant where you can sample Brazilian food. Coming next in, a practical guide to Europe from around Lisbon. Remember Vasco da Gama and all those Portuguese explorers we read about in history class? Well, that's a monument to them, and this is where they set out from. It's the Belém district of Lisbon. And it's a great place to spend an afternoon. Lots to see and do here. By the way, they haven't moved the Golden Gate Bridge to Lisbon. That's just a copy built by the same company. Be sure and visit the top of the Discovery Monument for this fantastic view. Now, that castle in the background there is the Belen Tower. It was built in the 16th century to protect the entrance to the harbor. The Discovery Monument is open daily. The cost of the elevator to the top is 310 escudos. This park is called the Garden of Empire. I love that name. And it leads you right to one of the most impressive and most visited buildings here in Lisbon, the Monastery of Geronimo. The building was begun in 1502 
and was financed by treasure brought back from Portuguese discoveries in Africa, Asia, and South America. At the Geronimus Monastery, the church is open from Tuesday to Sunday, and entrance is free. There is a small charge to get into the cloisters. Just down the road from the monastery, there's a cake shop and cafe that I think you should visit. It's called Patif Gurbelin, and they sell these little custard tarts here. Bashtesh de Belem. Oh, boy. Oh, man. They're, they're the best warm custard tart I've ever had. And I'm going to eat all three of these babies. Oh, boy, are they good. And that cinnamon and the powdered sugar. Excuse me. And in the shop at the front, they've got a very good selection of port wine. If you do want to buy port, though, the tip I've been given is that you get the best buy at the supermarket. The last time I visited Lisbon, I had a heck of a time finding my way around. This time, I'm going to stop into the tourist office and see if they can give me any help. The tourist office is located here between the bottom of Libertad Avenue and the Rossio train station. Here goes. Hiya. Hiya. Excuse me, I don't speak Portuguese. Do you, you speak English? Great. Yep, they speak English, and they're also very helpful in here. I got a map and was shown where the main sites are and how to get to them. I'd recommend that you make this your first stop in Lisbon. The tourist office is open daily from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. The tourist office is in the Baiese district. This is downtown Lisbon, where you'll find most of the shops. If you're looking for a good buy, check out the jewelry shops. Lisbon is a good place for jewelry, especially silver. Compared to other European countries, the price is relatively cheap. The castle that towers over the center is the Castello de São Jorge. It's in the Alfama district which is the most ancient part of Lisbon. You could walk up to the castle, but believe me, it's a hike. So do yourself a favor and grab either the 12 or the 28 tram from downtown. Trouble is, they don't tell you where to get off of the castle. But you stick with me and I'll show you when to hop off. I feel like a sardine. When you spot this pool off the right-hand side of the tram, that's your signal to hop off. And from here, it's just a few hundred yards walk up to the castle. The Moors built St. George's Castle, and I'm sure glad they did, or my walk up here would have been pretty pointless. You know, Lisbon seems to be a city that's just full of beautiful gardens and viewpoints. And the battlements in the castle here are a great place for playing soldier. The Castello de São Jorge is open daily, and entrance is free. After leaving the castle, give yourself time to wander back down to the center through the warren of little streets that make up the Alfama district. And if you're staying out at Estoril or Cascais, don't leave town without trying one of the wide variety of restaurants you'll find here. Thank you very much. My first caparinha, a traditional Brazilian drink. Well, I'm in a Brazilian restaurant after all, so why not? In fact, you can be a very adventurous diner here in Lisbon. You can eat your way through the old Portuguese empire. Believe me, if the Portuguese were there, there's a restaurant from that country here. 
I know two things about Brazilian food. They got a gang of coffee in Brazil and Brazil nuts. So I decided to ask Antonio, the owner of this Brazilian restaurant, all about this very unusual looking food. Antonio, what's this bubbling cauldron over here? It's the fish bladder. Uh huh. It's probably the most typical Brazilian dish. <coughs> it has its black beans. Those I recognize, black yeah. beans, yeah. And then it has mixed up uh, a bit. Antonio told me a lot of the dishes originated in Africa. This one, for example, is made with black beans, beef, pork, and different types of sausages. It's served with rice, and it's very filling. I know, I tried it. Slice of orange. For vegetables, we've got green cabbage fried in garlic with sliced orange. And here's an unusual combination. It's a sort of beef stew cooked with banana. It's funny. They go surprisingly well together. At Comida de Santo, meals cost from 2,000 to 3,500 escudos. Stay with me, and I'll take you to a country palace of the kings of Portugal, and to a manor house that's been converted into a small hotel. Coming next in, a practical guide to Europe from around Lisbon. Back in Cascais, I wanted to see more of this lovely coastline and go inland to the palaces and gardens of Sintra. All the towns in this region are connected by bus services, but the best way to do your sightseeing is by car. And if you need to rent one, you can do it right here at the hotel reservation desk. Hi. Hiya. I was interested in renting a car for a day. I a car rental from Hotel Village Cascais costs from 28,000 escudos per week. Sintra is about 20 miles northwest of Lisbon. It's considered to be one of the most beautiful places in Portugal, and I say amen to that. It was the summer residence of Portuguese kings and aristocrats, and its lush woods are dotted with palaces and stately manor houses. But come summer, don't expect to have it to yourself. One of the best known sites here is the Peña Palace. some palace some hike too I'll tell you it'll take you about an hour and a half to walk all the way from town and even if you drive the way I did you're gonna have to park your car down at the foot of the hill and hike on up I bet the kings of Portugal didn't have to do this when they lived here I feel as though I'm wandering around some mad uncle's attic. The place is a jumble sale. Definitely worth the climb, by the way. It's a lot of fun. They've got every style of architecture and furniture in this place, from Moorish and Gothic to Victorian. And lots of information for you in English. The Peña Palace is open from Tuesday to Sunday, and entrance is 400 a school. Ask your travel agent about the new level of accommodation they have here in Portugal, country house tourism. A number of farm estates and manor houses like this one have been converted into small hotels. Exclusive. Only a few guests can stay in these places. Expensive, but you get what you pay for. Most of them are located in beautiful rural settings like this or near historic villages. I can see Pina Palace from here. This one near Sintra is called Quinta das Sequoias, and it is beautiful. You know, if you're touring around Portugal and you want a real get-away-from-it-all hotel to base yourself, these places are worth knowing about. Six ball in the side pocket, except there ain't no side pocket. The entire hotel is decorated with beautiful antiques, and there are only six bedrooms here. By the way, you have to stay for a minimum of three nights. My problem is I don't want to leave. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is a special hotel, all right. And what makes it extra special for me is that it's so quiet. And believe me, that's a very rare thing to find in a European hotel. I've got the pool to myself today. Maybe I'll take a dip. At Quinta das Sacoyas, rooms cost from 14,000 to 22,000 escudos. So, checking on country house tourism is the first of my tips for Portugal. And here are some more practical tips to help you make the most of your visit. If you're going to be spending a few days in Lisbon, buy a transportation pass. It'll save you money. If there are a few of you, use taxis. They're cheap and there are plenty of them. It's cheaper if you buy port wine at the supermarket. To see Lisbon's surrounding areas, rent a car. When eating out, remember that fresh fish is very good in Portugal. And don't forget that most shops are shut on Saturday. This is John Garacio saying goodbye from Sintra in Portugal.